Hi guys, so in today's video I want to talk about what to do in a code, and specifically I'm talking about a code blue or uh, where someone uh, stops breathing or their heart stops or goes into funky rhythms and you are coding a person. I've gotten asked this question a lot of times and being an ICU nurse I have gotten a lot more comfortable with codes um, and what to do, what my roles are as a nurse, what my roles are as a primary nurse, and what my roles are as when I'm just walking into a code. So I kind of just want to talk about the basic, basic things of what to do in a code. I'm not going to get into the certain meds and things like that. This is just going to be a basic video if you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do if my patient codes? and um, to kind of just simplify things for you. So they teach this in your CPR classes, but the first thing to do if you're a patient codes, if you walk in on a situation and you realize your patient is not breathing or they their heart has stopped, uh, first you have to determine which is which. Most of the time in adults, it's a cardiac issue. Not always, but most of the time their heart stops before they completely stop breathing. In kids, it's usually the opposite. Um, so the best thing to do is if you realize your patient's not breathing, one, check to see if they have a pulse because if they don't have a pulse, you're going to do CPR. But if they are just not breathing and they still have a pulse, then you're going to support their breathing. You are going to support whatever is lacking in the patient. If the heart stops, you're going to beat their heart for them. If their breathing stops, you're going to breathe for them. So the first thing though, besides checking to see if they have their pulse, um, is to get more help in the room. So even if you're not 100% sure yet what's going on, call for help. Say, I need help in room 10 or I need help wherever. Make sure you say which room you are unless you're like in an open area where people can physically see you because the first time that I ever had a situation where I needed help, it wasn't a code, but my patient was like literally falling out of bed and I was the only one in there and I needed someone else to come help me. I was like, I need help. And they're like, all the nurses came, but they're like, where are you? <laughs> and I had to like be like, I'm in room 12. So always say which room you're in because it's kind of hard if there's a bunch of rooms. But anyway, so call for help. And while you can call for help why you are checking if there's a pulse or if they're breathing. If they don't have a pulse, you're going to start CPR. If they're not breathing, but they have a pulse, you're going to breathe for them. It's that simple. And once other people get in the room, then they're going to be helping you and you're just going to step into one role. The best thing you can do once everyone gets in the room and you're truly coding a patient, you know, CPR, bagging them, all those things, is to pick a role and stick with it. If you're pushing meds, you're pushing meds. If you are rotating for CPR, you're rotating for CPR. If you're bagging someone, you're bagging someone. Don't hop around if you have enough resources. Like, is If you don't have enough resources of people there, then you're gonna have to rotate roles. But most of the time, especially nurses, ICU nurses especially, we're super nosy and we wanna be involved. And so <laughs> when you have a code, there's too many people there. So stick with your role. Also, don't be afraid if there's too many people in the room and you're not doing anything, you're just standing there waiting for them to tell you what to do. Don't be afraid to leave and um, just say, hey, if you need me, call me or whatever. Because if there's too many people in the room, that actually can delay um, codes and the efficiency of codes. I hope that kind of simplifies things for you a little bit. Um, I'd love to do more videos kind of more in detail on certain meds and situational videos, um, but I think that gives you guys a good foundation for what to do. Uh, don't freak out, or if you're going to freak out, try to remain calm on the outside because that's the best thing you can do for your patients and things happen. People die, people code, and as nurses, we have to know how to intervene. Thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in my next video.